The thing that frustrates me creatively about these high budget commercials that you see on TV is that they utilize these really expensive high speed cameras and robots, things that cost upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars. My girlfriend got that stool from a thrift store for a couple bucks and uh, here we are once again stealing from my girlfriend in a YouTube video. Sorry. This is a blue screen. I got this on Amazon. Can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's nice and big, which is really helpful in a lot of scenarios. Here on the other side, it actually turns into a green screen, which is nice. And as you can see, the reason we're using the blue side instead of the green side is because the product we're shooting has green on the label. The plan is to remove the background in editing, which is why we have different colors. If they were the same color, we would have issues with the product and we don't want that. These right here, these are called foam core. I use them all the time in my work. If we were to put a piece of black foam core up against our subject, we would be creating a shadow on one side of it. This gives us a more dark and moody look. That's not what we're going for today. Today we want nice even lighting all the way around our product because it's a light summery drink, so it only makes sense to have a nice bright and summery vibe. These are very cheap. I get them from the dollar store for just a couple of bucks, as well as these clamps, which also cost about a dollar each. And we're simply going to clamp it to this stool to create some fill. And notice how the subject is quite far away from our blue screen. You don't want them sandwiched right up against each other. If you have them too close together, what you end up with is the blue or the green reflecting onto your product. And you definitely don't want that. So it's important to create that distance. So the shot is set up, the camera's rolling, everything looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna use this spray. This is just a moisture mist. You can use water. And what this is gonna do is give your subject a wet look, which makes it look colder, which is especially nice if you're filming a beverage. Okay, we did it. We got a shot that I think is gonna work out pretty well. Welcome to Final Cut Pro X. As you know, this is where I edit most of my videos. This is the shot we got. As you can see, it's very straightforward. We slowly have the can rotating around and then it stops with our label facing the front. The obvious first step is to key out our blue screen. So we're gonna start by going down to our effects tab and typing in keyer. And we're simply gonna drag the keyer effect onto our footage. Now, of course, the keyer only got rid of the blue background and we still have some other stuff in the shot we we want to remove. What I'll do is go back into our effects tab and I'm going to type in draw mask and we're going to bring the draw mask effect onto our footage. I'm going to make sure our playhead is at the beginning of our clip and I'm going to start drawing around our can. I'm going to go up here to punch in and we're just making a simple mask around the bottom of the can. That looks pretty good. We're going to scroll down here and we're going to add keyframes to both the transforms and the control points for our draw mask. And then we're going to take our playhead and move to the end of the clip on our last frame. And we're going to make some adjustments. And this looks pretty good. I'm actually quite happy with that. So we can move along to starting to create this flying can effect. With our playhead at the beginning of the shot and our clip selected, I'm going to go down to my transforms here and I'm going to make a keyframe on our scale and I'm going to scale down down to 50%. Next, I'll take my playhead and move it to the end of our clip and I'll increase the scale back up to 100%. What this does is it creates the effect that the can is starting small and getting bigger as the clip goes on. The next thing I wanna do is add some rotation. So I'm gonna start our clip off with a rotation of about, uh, I'd say 40 degrees. We're gonna keyframe it and then we're gonna go to our last keyframe on the scale, which is also the last frame of our clip and we're gonna bring this back to zero degrees. And this is what our shot looks like. Now in the previous Socialite commercial that we did, we had the advantage of using motion control devices. What this did was it had the can actually moving through space. That way, as it got closer to the camera, it was actually coming into focus. This is one of the big things that really sells this effect of the can floating through the air. Now the little issue we have with our shot that we got today is that the can was stationary in one spot. So it's in focus the entire time. What we can do to fix this is we can go into our effects tab and we can add a directional blur. We add the directional effect onto our clip. We'll bring our playhead to the beginning of the clip. We'll boost up the blur all the way to 70% in keyframe. And then we'll scrub through and as the logo kind of comes around, I think right here we can bring this back down to zero so that it's perfectly in focus. Now this little trick isn't going to be quite as good as the can actually moving through the shot coming into focus, but it's pretty damn close and it does get the job done. This is what we've got once we've added the blur and you can see that it starts 
blurry and as it gets closer to the camera, we have a shot that's in focus. In my generators here, I'm gonna pull in a custom generator and we're just gonna create a blue solid. So we're gonna trim it down to size and we're going to change the color of our solid to blue. Effectively, what we've just done is created another blue screen and I know that seems kind of silly because we just got rid of our blue screen, but you'll see why very shortly. I'll go ahead and highlight both of these clips and then I'll right click and hit new compound clip. I'm just gonna name it can and hit okay. Now those two clips have just been merged into this one compound clip. While we're here, I'm gonna create a speed ramp. So as this kind of comes around, I'll stop there and hit shift B on my keyboard and I'll speed this up by four times. I'm gonna smooth this out as much as possible using these little handles here. And then on our last frame, I'm gonna click over here and hit hold and I'm gonna drag this out until it's exactly six seconds long. So what we just did is we sped up the beginning of the clip so that the can flies in, and then as it comes around, it slows down, and then it stops and holds on its final position for the remainder of the clip. Now, like we did last time, we're gonna key out the blue once again. So back into our effects tab here, we're gonna type in keyer, and we're gonna drag our keyer onto the clip, and that will automatically get rid of the blue, nice and easy. And now from here, you can pretty much add whatever background you like. You could use a black background, this will give you a dark dark and moody sort of effect like I had in the Socialite Bold commercial, or you could add a white background and this will give you a brighter, more clean look. In my mind, the best possible thing we could put in the background of this shot is a beach with an ocean and sand, palm trees, but the thing is I haven't been to a beach in over a year. And that, my friends, is where today's amazing sponsor, Storyblocks, is gonna come in clutch like they have many times before. You need a quick establishing shot of the city skyline for one of your client projects. Storyblocks has a ton of of jaw-dropping drone footage and time lapses for you to choose from. Storyblocks is an online subscription service and with a membership plan, you get unlimited downloads of high quality stock footage, motion backgrounds, After Effects templates, and overlays. So here we are on the Storyblocks website and I'm simply going to type in beach and let's see what comes up. And wouldn't you know it, we have over 40,000 results for beach. But to make things simple, I actually quite like the very first result that's come up. So I'm gonna download that and we're gonna download it in HDMOV. So here's our beach clip. I think this is gonna look really good. I'm gonna take this clip here and I'm gonna drag it underneath our can shot and I'm gonna cut this off at the end. And already that's looking pretty cool, but I still think we can make this a whole lot better. First things first, I wanna blend in the can with our scene. I want it to look cohesive like it was actually meant to be there. I'll make sure that our can clip is selected and then up here in our keyer window, I'm actually gonna go down to light wrap. I'm gonna play around with the amount a little bit and I'm thinking somewhere around 40 is gonna look pretty good. So I'm just gonna type in 40. Now, full disclosure, I am not an expert when it comes to keying at all, but generally what the light wrap does is it takes the surrounding exposure of the scene and applies it to your subject. It helps to kind of blend the exposure of those pixels together where the background meets the foreground. That way you're not ending up with a shot that looks totally out of place, but rather it kind of blends in and looks more put together. Now this is looking pretty good, but it's still quite a long ways away. The next thing I'm gonna do is color grade our clip and I'm gonna do that using Color Finale Pro. You can use whatever you like to color grade your footage. This is just the workflow that I'm used to. I'm gonna open my controls here and I'm gonna make a color wheels layer. I'm gonna boost my highlights a little bit, maybe bring down my shadows a touch, boost the saturation fix our white balance. And I think that looks pretty good. That's actually starting to fit in very well with our background. Now, the next thing I wanna do is start adding some life to our background. So I'm gonna take our playhead and move it back to the beginning and making sure our background layer is selected. I'm gonna punch in our scale to about 130%. And then I'm also gonna reposition it downward to get rid of that dock. I just want the sand. And I think negative 250 looks pretty good. I'm gonna set a keyframe on our scale here at 130%. And then I'm gonna scrub along here and find the point where our can stops flying in and stays still. And now I'm gonna increase my scale to 140%. Now what we're getting is this effect where as the can is coming closer to the camera, we also have the camera seemingly moving closer to the can. Now to take this a step further, I'm gonna go back to my effects tab here and type in directional once again. This is that same directional blur that we originally applied to our can, but now we're gonna apply it to our background. Making sure that the playhead is at the beginning of our shot and the background layer is selected. I'm gonna go up to our amount here for our directional blur and turn it down to zero and create a keyframe. And I'm just gonna scrub ahead a little bit to right about here. 
and I'm gonna create another keyframe on a directional blur, and this time we're gonna boost it to about 14%. Now by doing this, what ends up happening is as the can is getting closer to the camera, it's coming into focus, but also the background is now shifting out of focus. That step definitely isn't totally necessary, but I personally like the way it looks. Looking at the shot, I feel like the background is a little bit too bright, so what I wanna do is make sure the background layer is selected, and I'm gonna hit Command-6. This brings up our color window, and making sure we're in the exposure tab I'm just going to pull down on the master exposure slider to darken up the shot just a tiny bit I think that definitely looks better and now I'm also kind of feeling like the can isn't fully integrated into the scene so what I want to do here is boost the scale of our can to 120 percent actually we could probably go up to even 140. I really want the can to fill the frame and have this sort of larger than life effect about it. So I think 140% looks pretty good once we move this down a touch. And now to take all of this just a little step further, what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate our background layer by clicking on it, hitting Command C, and then hitting Command V. I'm gonna drag this on top of our whole clip and I'm gonna find our draw mask tool in our effects window and drag it onto this layer that we just created. And what I'm doing now is actually drawing our mask over these little bumps in the sand. I think this will just add another bit of layer and dimension to the clip instead of making the can look super flat on top of the whole background. The goal is that this way, the bottom of the can will be hidden behind the sand just a little bit, and that will make it look like it's more a part of the scene. Just gonna finish up our mask here, and we're gonna feather this by about two per and I think that looks pretty good. Let's play this back and see how it looks. Boom. That looks pretty cool. I actually like that a lot. Now things like this are actually extremely useful because you could run this as a six second pre-roll ad. All you'd have to do is add some text, maybe some sound effects, and you get something like this. Now, I don't know about you, but I could fully see that running as a pre-roll ad before a YouTube video. And while it's not that complicated to pull off, stuff like this can actually be very valuable to brands. So if you're a freelancer, videographer, photographer, and you're trying to figure out more ways you could make money without having to actually leave your house, get a stock footage subscription from Storyblocks and learn how to make objects fly. Because just like that in my home studio here in my dining room, we've created something that actually has some value. But that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful in some sort of way. If you did then give it a like don't forget to subscribe follow me on instagram at daniel.schiffer and as always i will see you guys in the next video